2011, 2012-ish, yeah. 2011, probably, yeah. Yeah. I think I could make the video much better now. You know, I, the, I, I'm not, um, uh, I've moved into a different thing of, of every one of the videos I make now, I want to be able to remake it as many times as possible. So that turns into a, more of a performance piece that can be re-performed over and over again. And in the moment when I was making that video, I did it a bunch of times and a bunch of times and got a good capture of it. But I don't think I've uh, created the uh, something that can be redone as much over and over. So, I mean, I, I'd like to redo that video at some point in a way that's more, um, uh, I don't know, just adaptable and, and um, per performance-like. Uh, so it's, it feels a little bit canned in some ways. Um, but uh, I, I, maybe that's just... It's good to get these things closed up and put them away sometimes, too. Um, but no, I, I don't know. I mean, I think one of the things that 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 it's an interesting video in that it kind of has a, a like a back door and a front door that lead backwards and forwards in time. So the watch the bubble piece was generated in some ways out of this earlier piece called I'm a Map. And then at the very end, I made this video called Truing, which ended up being, I, I kind of snuck it into the Watch the Bubble piece right at the last minute before Madeline said, don't put any more material in here. Because I kept, it, it would never stop. That was one of the interesting things about this video as well. I would always say, it's not quite ready. I'm still capturing something about the process. I'm going back through this archive of all this junk. And rather than put it in there, I want to film this something in this archive and you just kind of had to just eventually just like turn off the computer because you could just keep building it forever but the last thing that kind of made it over the transom was this piece that is actually probably my favorite piece that I perform quite a bit and um, kind of pushed me to where I am now more or less which is um, all of these things can be um, done over and over and over again in in the moment in a performative way rather than them being artifacts that um, that just get finished in 2012 and then you move away from them. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure. Published ones, you know, I started with the I'm a Map video in Kairos, and um, uh, then I did the Watch the Bubble one, and I did uh, one with students, which is this one called Casting Learning, and so those three are kind of of a piece that I did in about a two and a half or three year period. Um, and then the rest I've mostly just uh, just put on Vimeo or YouTube and so I'll make one and then it either does become kind of a, a a closed deal that I just post online somewhere or it just becomes one in my kind of repertoire that I'll do when I'm at a conference or you know uh, at a poetry reading I've started doing these at poetry readings and stuff too and just so I now just have like a, a I don't know a set that I can pull from and do some of these um, and I like doing that. Yeah, uh, the responses are always a little bit, um, I think audiences are unsure what to make of the pieces actually. I think a lot of times they'll uh, um, enjoy the affective um, experience of them um, and in the poetry readings I think that works better sometimes as opposed to in the academic conference the challenge in the academic conference is um, 
and this is a, a challenge related to these pieces and what you might call alt scholarship is so how do you calibrate the sort of performance, poetic, interesting imagery, music, flow, all of that with the intellectual content of scholarship. And I think to really make the scholarship work, you kind of need to spend more time with these. So a lot of times there's some scholarship that's happening in the lower corner and you might miss it if you're just sitting there in the moment. But if you were to go back and watch the video and then rewatch it, you might then then you might get that scholarly kernel. So I think the affective, whoa, that was kind of interesting, or I don't know what that was, comes across pretty well. And then the next layer down of, okay, what does that mean about, you know, digital epistemologies? Uh, I think there was something in there, but I'm not sure. That doesn't come through nearly um, as readily, I think, on an initial reading. But, I, that, you know, I think that's, um, we have the same tendencies if you are reading a, a really difficult scholarly article on print. You go back and you reread it, you reread it, and you just spend time with it for a while, and then you kind of get it a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think curation is a wonderful concept. I love the concept of curation because it's got not only the sense of like capturing and saving things, but also, um, you know, applying your own interpretation or working with them to make them understandable and usable by others. So I almost feel like a text like Watch the Bubble is a curatorial text as much as anything. There is, you know, uh, kind of a main video, but there's all these other pieces. And, you know, the umbrella text that's published in Kairos in many ways is really a curation of these pieces that captured the process of the composing of that one video at any given time. Um, so I think that's really valuable. And I mean, I like it in terms of the way that it fits in with notions of alt scholarship, too, because it's sort of just trying to um, capture and make sense of stuff rather than win an argument or, um, you know, it might be OK to just say something interesting happened. Um, let's see what we can make of it. And, and so I really like that impulse. Um, it, I think it can be a little bit messy in, if it gets caught up with, uh, you know, notions of archives. And, you know, there's a lot of things that curation can be um, all really interesting. Uh, and this one in particular is a different kind of curation in that it's linked to a writing process or it's kind of about the composing process, a multimedia composing process. <laughs> well, I'm working on more videos like the ones that I've made, and I'm trying to collect about 40 of them and, and call it a book, you know. Um, so the idea is uh, to, to see if there's a way that you can get a critical mass of these, and I'm trying to balance the amount of writing around the videos that needs to happen for it to sort of qualify as a book and to actually count as an academic, you know, to, to resonate with academics uh, as a book of scholarship. So that's, um, that, that's where I'm going with these kinds of projects. Um, the other things I'm doing are like a completely different vein. So I'm doing platform development for, um, uh, you know, uh, academics trying to do that and digital humanities things. And um, I'm also trying to do a lot of these things in my classes. So I just finished an e-poetry unit in in one of my classes. And I um, usually I think people uh, see this in a negative light when you try to clone yourself as a scholar or what have you and make your students do exactly what you do. You're, that's really frowned upon. But I... I kind of felt good about it because I asked them to, you know, make these wacky screen poems and, you know, do these performances. And they really liked it and they made some very interesting things. So I'm, you know, I'm learning how to teach this, I think, uh, is one of the things I'm working on now, kind of figuring out if I can come up with really good models for 
making students feel comfortable doing this kind of work and having them take something away from it that is intellectually kind of rich for them. Yeah. Hmm. No, I'm just really grateful to Kairos for, you know, making space for this kind of work, I think. And I think, um, you know, one of the things that is um, it's really valuable for these kinds of stamps of approval or authorization to be applied to work that doesn't fit in the kind of normal boxes. So, I mean, I've done a little bit of this with a text like this by um, people are going to wonder what this is. So I'm just going to call it scholarship. And then maybe it'll be scholarship by applying that label. And I think Kairos is really um, valuable for being able to to authorize that in some ways and so that's it's really to be celebrated and that's you know that's the underlying kind of content piece about how this is about the computers and writing community which is comfortable with that and and so um i guess if there is a takeaway it is the idea that tr you can try something different put a lot of energy into it, it won't be like um, like easy. It's still going to be rigorous or challenging. There's a lot to it, but it doesn't have to look like what everything looks like before. And it can be driven by just playing with the technologies and seeing what you can come up with. And there's a space for that. And um, it's really valuable because we already know how to do the other stuff, you know, and it's good to have really traditional things. It's fine, but we've got that figured out already in some way. So these new spaces are really valuable. Mm 